With this video, we're going to go over nervous system medications and we'll be reviewing the therapeutic class antidepressants. So depression affects many adults in the United States. There are different types of depression. There are also many causes of depression. Some causes may be neurotransmitter imbalance. Medications can cause depression, vitamin deficiency, or medical disorders may even cause depression like a thyroid disorder. So research has shown that depression and anxiety, a lot of that is linked to neurotransmitter imbalance. So I'd like to go over these neurotransmitters and as we become more aware of them, then hopefully then the side effects and the adverse effects of these drugs will make more sense once we know what these neurotransmitters or these brain chemicals do. So the first neurotransmitter I'd like to talk about is norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is a neurotransmitter of the sympathetic nervous system. It's part of that fight or flight reaction that happens. It's from the same family as adrenaline. Norepinephrine gives us energy, makes us alert. So it arms us when there's time for danger that we can kind of think and get out of the way. Norepinephrine also increases our blood pressure and our heart rate. Our next neurotransmitter is serotonin. Serotonin, I call her our happy girl. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that has to do with mood and happiness. You will also see her in the pharmaceutical class related to, they'll call her 5-HT. So when you see that, you know that we're talking about our girl, Sarah. A majority of our serotonin is in our intestines. So you will see serotonin drugs used for nausea and vomiting. She's um, kind of all over the place, but when we talk about antidepressants, then we're talking about our happy girl, Sarah, and that neurotransmitter that affects our mood. Our next neurotransmitter is dopamine. Dopamine is our neurotransmitter of pleasure and reward. You know, when addictive drugs, when people take drugs and get very addicted to them, the system will really be flooded with dopamine. So some of these antidepressants may enhance dopamine. Dopamine also is a neurotransmitter of coordinated movement. When we talk about the disorder of Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease is low dopamine. So with those disorders, we may be giving dopamine, dopamine agonists or medications that enhance dopamine. So there are five different classes of antidepressants. There's selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. There's serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, tricyclic antidepressants, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, and typical, atypical antidepressants. So some, gen some general considerations of antidepressants, you always wanna begin with a health history, with a physical exam, and certainly assess the signs of depression. One thing to always know about antidepressants is that they take one to four weeks to work. So it's really important that individuals that take these medicines are taught that. A lot of times they may take them for a day or two, they don't feel any different, and they'll quit the medications. So we need to, that's a really important teaching point. Next is to always watch for the adverse effect of suicide. This is a black box warning with antidepressants. There are a lot of different theories about why this happens. Um, antidepressants may not bring out the best in us, may make us more aggressive, and we could, call, we could you know, initiate suicide. Um, they may take away some of the barriers that we have, so that may initiate suicide. Some research I've read says this chemicals are getting balanced, that it just really increases the propensity for suicide. So there's really no hard reason why, but there are a lot of different, different thoughts out there about what may cause suicide with these. But always, of course, assess your patient's depression, the client's depression, and um, watch for signs of suicide. Also, serotonin syndrome is an adverse effect of these medications because they all in one way or another are going to enhance serotonin, our happy girl. So we want to make sure that we watch for serotonin syndrome. We'll talk about that adverse, life-threatening adverse effect here in a couple slides. And lastly, always avoid St. John's wort with antidepressants. 
St. John's wort is a natural herb and it naturally enhances serotonin. So we certainly would not want to give two things together that increase serotonin because then we would increase the likelihood of adverse effects and serotonin syndrome. So our first medication is SSRI, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. These medications are used for depression, OCD, and anxiety disorders, and they increase serotonin. Serotonin reuptake inhibitors, what happens is that generally our body reuptakes or recycles these neurotransmitters and puts them back in those um, nerve endings so that they can be released again. So when we stop that reuptake, now we've increased that neurotransmitter at the synapse. So examples of these medicines are fluoxetine, that's Prozac, Paroxetine, that's brand name Paxil, Ceratoline, and Esotalopram are probably our most common ones. To remember the side effects of SSRIs, I think of SSRI S. So S is for suicide again, watch for that. The next S is for serotonin syndrome. R is for reproductive dysfunction. These medications really decrease libido, so we need to be aware of that and teach that to our clients. I is for insomnia and increased weight gain. So definitely if these medications cause insomnia, individuals might want to take it in the morning. Last again is that S for St. John's wort, so that would be a no on that. You don't want to take St. John's wort. So serotonin syndrome, what is that? It's really a toxicity of serotonin and the nervous system is just going crazy. So first thing that we'll see is altered mental status. The patient will be confused and they may be agitated. Next, we'll see autonomic hyperactivity. The patient may sweat. There may be a high temperature. I've heard of these individuals coming into the emergency room with temperatures of 105. Their pulse and their blood pressure are gonna be elevated. And lastly is neuromuscular abnormalities. there be muscle tremors or hyperactive reflexes. So the next class of antidepressants is SNRIs serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. So not only do these increase serotonin, they will also increase norepinephrine. These drugs are good for depression, bipolar disorder, anxiety disorders. This might be a good antidepressant for someone that just is having trouble getting motivated, having trouble getting out of bed, because again, it does increase energy and alertness. Example of this is duloxetine or Cymbalta. Side effects are hypertension, and again, remember, these increase norepinephrine, so watch for hypertension. An adverse effect, again, is serotonin syndrome and suicide. Our next class is TCAs, or tricyclic antidepressants. These medications are used for depression, OCD, anxiety disorders, and they're also good for neuropathic pain. So these medicines increase norepinephrine, again, and serotonin. Examples are amitriptyline and imepromine. So to think of TCA side effects, I think of TCA. So the T is for tired. These medications cause sedation, so we need to be aware of that. Sometimes physicians may order these medicines because of that property. Patients with fibromyalgia with the nerve pain, it helps them get some rest and calms those nerves down. C is for cardiac dysrhythmias, so that would be an adverse effect of these medicines. And lastly, these medications have anticholinergic effects. Remember cholinergic in our bodies, that's parasympathetic nervous system, everything's kind of wet and moving around. So anticholinergic, everything would be dry. That would be blurred vision and dry eyes, dry mouth, dry stool, um, dry urine, which is urinary retention. Those would all be anticholinergic effects of our TCAs. Our next class are MAOIs, which are monoamine oxidase inhibitors. These are really interesting drugs. They're very heavy hitters, so these would not be first-line drugs for, anti, um, for depression. So what MAO is, is so monoamine oxidase is a chemical in our bodies that break down some of these feel-good chemicals that 
individuals lack when they have depression. So it would make sense then that we would want to stop this chemical so that we would stop the breakdown of of these feel good chemicals. So that's what MAOIs do, MAOI inhibitors. One thing to consider about this drug though is that it also, MAO also breaks down a chemical called tyramine. Tyramine naturally works in our body to help regulate our blood pressure. So consider if we block MAO, tyramine is no longer inhibited and it can kind of come in unhinged and patients can have hypertensive crisis. So in turn, when individuals take MAOIs, they need to have watch for high tyramine foods. So I think about Super Bowl foods, this would be foods like um, we, um, beer and wine, smoked cheeses and smoked meats, uh, avocados, bananas, those kind of things. Those are high tyramine foods. So individuals would need to limit those foods so that they wouldn't um, get too high in tyramine and have a hypertensive crisis. Examples of these meds, I think these medications take you out of the pit of despair. So there's PIT. So there's phenylzine, isocarbox, oh, I can't say this one, isocarboxacid, translycpromine, and selegiline. Again, these medications are used for depression, OCD, and anxiety disorders. They block serotonin, norepinephrine, epinephrine and dopamine. That's why these drugs um, are so powerful. Adverse effects again are serotonin syndrome and again watch that hypertensive crisis. Our last class of medications of antidepressants are atypicals. These atypicals they don't fit into any other class so that's why they're called atypical. They're used for depression and we're now using these drugs for smoking cessation. They increase the reuptake of serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Examples are bupropion or Wellbutrin. It's also been released as Zyban for smoking, for those that want to stop smoking. Side effects are nausea and vomiting, dry mouth, and headache. Adverse effects are suicide and serotonin syndrome again. One thing to note about these medications is that they can lower the seizure threshold. So that's an important consideration. They wouldn't be good medications for people with um, seizure disorders um, as well as some other things. Okay, so that's it on our antidepressants. If you have any questions, please let me know.